Today on Let's Talk Crime, we're gonna learn a little bit about what is bail and how does it work. Frank, what is bail? Well, as always, welcome all to Let's Talk Crimes. Bail. Let me begin by saying that most people refer to bail as bond also. So when you hear bail and bond, they're referring to the same thing. The general definition of bail is a temporary release of a person until trial. That is a definition. Person's release until trial. Now, most times the conditions for that person's release includes a monetary sum that has to be given to the court. That's what lay people and, and the, under the non-legal language is referred to as bail or bond. It's money. Okay, and so when does a person know how much their bail will be? Good. Normally, when you get arrested, depending on the charges, let's say that for most charges, you will know almost immediately when you get to the jail. You will be informed by the corrections officers on state charges. Why is that? Almost every jail has something called a standard bond list. There was a time at the beginning of, of, of the criminal justice system that they determined that certain bonds would apply to specific crimes. These are the standard bonds. So you will be told, sir, you're being arrested with the DUI, you have a $1,500 bond. This is coming straight from a list. And you will know that at the jail. Okay, and then, so you're at the jail and you have a bond hearing. And then how much, what determines at the bond hearing if you even, if you'll get a bond? Okay, let me tell you about a bond hearing. You don't always have to go to a bond hearing. When you get arrested, if you have a standard bond and you move quickly, you call your loved ones, your family members, and they post a bond, you will be, get out, you will be able to get out and there will be no bond hearing. If you're not out within 24 hours, in most jurisdictions, you will be then taken to a bond hearing and there the question will be, how much bond can you afford? The judge will be go a little bit into the, the facts of the case and he will assign the bond. He can either go by the standard bond list or he can cater a bond for you. Okay, so now, now you know you, you have a bond. So where do you go to actually pay for it? Is it at the jail? Do I have to go to a bondsman? Or These are the do? types of questions that I like to answer because they look simple, but this is what Let's Talk Crimes is about. You get arrested, so what do you do? Well, first thing you do is you try to get your jail number. This seems like non-legal, but it's important. Family members get a call from their, from their loved ones that they're in jail, and they speak about a lot of things. Once they hang up, they, they forget to get the important information. You they need to, your first call. Correct. Yeah. They need to know what's the jail number in almost every single jail, and they need to know how much is the bond, which the defendant will know, and then they call a bondsman normally. You don't have to. I'm going to tell you the distinction. You can literally go to the jail and post a bond if it's a small. Most bonds are usually a little substantial and many people cannot afford them and they use the services of a bondsman. Okay, and then what's like what's the job of the bondsman? You know, I'm sure they have certain responsibilities once they once they give you the money for the bond. Absolutely. The way the bond business works is these these a agencies have specific powers of attorneys with the state. So they're allowed to, to practically sign for $100,000, $20,000, or whatever your bond is. They don't necessarily write the check to the, to the state. The state will take the word for it. Okay. Now, in turn for, for that, they will charge the defendant 10%. Let's give an example. Your bond is $10,000. You don't have $10,000. You call a bondsman. A bondsman will tell you, I want $1,000 and maybe I want some collateral for the 10. He will go and put a power of attorney with the jail and you will be released. You only put 10%, you will not get the 10% back. Okay, and then, all right, so now I'm out on bond. What happens if, you know, I don't, I missed a court date, I overslept, something happens? Well, what happens? This is where the bondsman is not a nice guy anymore. A bondsman has actually told the state, look, I'm, I'm licensed with you. 
I give you my word that he's going to show. And if not, I'm going to bring him before the court. So you just have a bondsman right in the, your doorsteps the moment you decide that you're not going to go to court. Bondsmen will hunt you down. You've probably heard the word bounty hunters before. And they have uh, the authority to actually arrest you and bring you before the court. That's normally what would happen. Wow. And then, so this whole process of, you know, you get arrested, you go to jail, you have the bond hearing. Is there, is there just a, you know, kind of a time frame in which when you hit the, when you get into jail to when you could possibly get out? Every jurisdiction is different. Obviously, we're here in Miami, Florida. We're a metropolitan city and we're very busy. It's very difficult to time, uh, tell the client how long it's going to take from the time the bondsman put in the slip. In Miami, I can tell you that it's going to take between 8 and 24 hours from the time the bondsman goes to the jail and places his power of attorney. In other jurisdictions, I suspect that it's quicker. I've, I've uh, worked cases in Tampa, Florida, for example, and it's a much quicker system. And uh, I think that's about it for today. I, I hope this helped. This is a basic general information on what you need to know on bonds. Uh, as I always tell you, please don't get arrested. It never works. I hear a Let's Talk Crimes. You're here to learn what you need to do to not get arrested. Have a great day, and I'll see you at the next episode. What you gonna do when they come for you?